Hello again, you're watching the Scrapline Model Railway Weathering and this is um, a new video on how to create other weathering effects as shown in this uh, coach which has been done previously. Um, I'm going to be showing in this video how to create the roof peel effect. Um, I've done this coach in two halves, so one half I've done in rust, the other half I've done in uh, which would be the, the top coat of paint failed exposing all the primer underneath. So as you can see um, the rust here is um, kind of a good effect to, to create um, obviously with, with corrosion setting in underneath the paintwork which is sort of blistering itself in its way through the paint and then creating that peeling effect. This, this actual effect is really good on things like fire damaged coaches or, or locomotives and stuff um, which I will show how to create a fire damaged coach in, in the future uh, using this particular technique and um, of course obviously the, the primer is, is a completely different base coat to use but hopefully this will give you an idea of what to do. This wagon um, I prepared this one without using any base coats underneath it. Um, so basically the, the stuff that I use to create the peeling effect hasn't got nothing underneath it, but it gives you an idea of what, what it looks like before you start applying all the weathering powders and stuff that goes on the model. So the model I'm going to be doing in this video is um, this Hornby Class 50. Um, this was originally... 5002 superb and I've stripped the numbers off and um, renamed and renumbered it into Renown. This is going to become part of my own loco fleet on my layout. Uh, this will sit alongside 5030 and 5046, both uh, all three of them being in rundown condition as they were just before they were withdrawn. Um, I've also stripped off a lot of the weathering at the side which Hornby stick on there I don't quite know what they use but it was an absolute nightmare to get it off so this is going to be the candidate <clears throat> and 5029 uh, looking at some images online wasn't in bad condition when it was taken out of service um, so I'm going to work on just a few areas of creating the roof peel effect sort of mainly around where they failed sort of around the head coat boxes um, the roof fan areas and some of the other roof panels just the occasional bit here and there and which is perfect really to sort of speed the video up and not show you how to create roof peel effects over the whole model okay so starting off um, Humber old matte coat clear varnish and white weathering powder now you could mix um, a little bit of black weathering powder with the white weathering powder just to create that sort of grey primer effect. But because I'm going to weather, weather the roof as well once it's done, um, I don't think it's necessary to do this. Now this is quite brutal again, as if with all weathering. Um, in my previous videos you probably noticed you think, oh Christ that's a bit too much, but the effects are outstanding once they're done. So we're going to go straight over the whole of this roof using the matte coat varnish and as it being quite a warm day today I don't particularly want to put any thinners in with this as it will dry too quick I'm going to cut the video and then come back to it once the varnish is done. Okay, so I've gone over the whole of the roof uh, with varnish. Now I haven't gone below the orange or white line along the top simply because I'm working on the roof and I don't particularly want to get too much of the way the weather and powders any further down at this stage of the model. So 
getting yourself an old cheap brush. I've got this one which is a little bit sort of worn in, perfect for, for dabbing powders. Um, not waiting for the varnish to dry, um, and I'm going to actually go over the whole of the roof by stabbing the weathering powders into all the varnish. I've also done the front of the head coat boxes as well, so I'm going to dab the powders into them as well. I'm not going to go too much around the network southeast emblems and with the lights and stuff like that along the head coat boxes they can all be cleaned off afterwards. Okay, I'm going to cut the video, come back to this when it's done because it's drying out quite quickly so I need to get it done double sharp. Okay, so I've got this whole of this model's roof covered in white weathering powder which is obviously soaked into the uh, varnish. Um, it doesn't need to be any more applied heavily than this. Um, this is adequate enough. Um, again, if you don't want to use the effect of having the base coat of primer coming through the paint, um, then switch the shades over to a rust colour, which is um, always best to use the orange, the brown and the red oxide as well. Mix together and you get a really good effect um, when you start doing the roof peel effect. Um, I will now leave this to dry for probably about an hour, probably half hour if I stuck it out in the sun would be ideal. Um, it needs to be completely dry. Once it's dry, um, get a light, <coughs> a, a soft brush and just give the roof a bit of a dust off to remove any excess powders. That's a must have. Okay, so I've given that time to dry. And um, the next stage is, is basically to repaint the roof. Um, and I'm going to be using Decal Fix by Humbrol and um, a suitable rail match acrylic paint. Um, and they're mixed into a pot of about 50 to 60 parts. Um, the decal fix and anything between sort of 50 and half so half and half mix is, is good enough but I find sometimes actually the decal fix the more you got of that then the better the peel you you create now this is a quite a messy job and um, I've only actually just managed to mix the pot up and I'm absolutely covered in black paint already so give my hands a quick wipe and the brush handle as well. I managed to get up the handle, but it's there. And what I'm going to be doing is, is being really careful with this, um, as because it's so watery, it gets everywhere. So thin layers brushed over the roof. Um, try not to go too heavy. So th the thinner the brush fall along the sides, the better. Now you may find it may catch onto some of like the, the roof detail and may run down the side of the loco. Um, I always have a bit of tissue or cotton bud to hand just in case anything does drip down the sides and I wipe it off straight away. The first coat it will mix it with the weathering powders a little bit.
every brush load that you put on here just um, wipe your brush out on a bit of tissue just to remove any any powders that your brush picks up otherwise you kind of turn you're trying to create a black roof again and you almost turn it into a grey so top tip Okay, so I've gone over the whole of the roof and um, <clears throat> at the moment it doesn't matter if you've gone down below the um, the flashing bands along the, the top of the roof line. Um, being a decal fix mixture, uh, the stuff does peel off. Anything that does drip down, um, if you do miss it, again it doesn't matter because you can just soften it back up and then remove it. But if you get it before it does that, it's always better. Um, as you can see, I've gone across the whole roof. And at this stage, doesn't look good, I know. But um, what I now do is I leave this to dry. Decal fix actually probably dries in, in about five minutes normally. Um, so what I tend to do, if I'm in a hurry, I can get a hairdryer on it and just blow the hairdryer over it, um, holding it at a distance so it doesn't actually blow any of the, um, the mixture of paint down the side of the, the bodywork. Or you can just have yourself a cup of tea five, 10 minutes later, come back and then apply up to about four to five coats of this depending on how how much you feel that it's covered um, if you want it to go back into an almost a black roof then obviously the more coats of paint that it's going to take to go over the top of this um, I think that probably three would be adequate enough because I want the roof to be slightly faded anyway um, yeah, that's probably a, a good number of coats to put on this so um, I'll get the other the extra coats of paint on here and then I'll come back in a minute and let you know how many that was. A quick note as well, um, when you come to apply the second coat as well, because you've already locked in all the weather powders with the first coat of this mixture, um, you don't really need to keep dabbing your brush out to remove any white powders. So it's just a case of just going back over the whole roof again for, for, for however many uh, coats that you require to put on it. Okay, so I've put three coats on it which I think is more than enough uh, to create the effect that I want on the loco anyway. Um, any areas where it's dripped down <coughs> on this, to, onto this sort of area, again just a, a damp cotton bud, give it a wipe over and that will clean any excess away. There wasn't too many drips on here. There was one large one on the other side, which I removed completely, off the, which dripped all the way down the side of the bodywork. That's that. Okay, the battery's getting a bit uh, short on my uh, camera, so what I'm going to do is just do a couple of little areas on the roof, just to give you an idea of the next stages of creating the the, uh, the paint peel effect. Um, I'll get a little barbecue skewer. Um, and snap them in half. Uh, cocktail sticks are just a little bit too sharp and pointy so with, with this one I normally just bang it on the table or the worktop just to kind of blunt the point off a little bit and then you just want to drag it over the surface of the area that you want to create the roof peel. That way it just breaks through the surface and exposes and gets through down to the, uh, the weathering powders <clears throat> with a brush, light uh, dipped in thinners and then just dabbed out on a bit of tissue paper. I'm going to just brush some thinners over this area and just leave that to, to soak in for a couple of minutes. Okay, so the next stage is to this is to use the, the point of this and to find a little area and just break the surface and then and 
and to create the paint peel effect. So I've come back down this end of the loco as there uh, seems to be a bit more, more of the way the weathering powder is underneath this, this end. I must have missed that area. Um, so this has again been softened up by thinners and as you can see it's, it's leaving, it's exposing the powders underneath. So just dragging it down. Yeah, so that's, that's basically what you're trying to achieve. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have to cut the video now because I think my camera is about to die. Um, I will come back with the second part of this video uh, which shows you the finished result of what I've done um, and also how to weather, to create the weather effects on top of the um, just the faded and obviously the blistering paintwork as well. And also I'm going to, either in the same video or a separate video, show you um, how to weather everything else on this locomotive which is pretty much the same as what I did on the class 40 that I did. Um, shame I couldn't show you a bit more of, of getting the peel on it but um, I may well come back with a second part and just maybe have another go at it because the thing is with this you can reactivate it any time um, so I can come back to it in about three weeks time and, and just carry on with it and just do a bit more peeling but for now you get the idea of what's what and um, again if you like all my stuff so far please do subscribe um, share the videos out to anyone you know and um, hopefully I'm hoping you can see that because I can't barely see it on my screen but um, yeah I should see you again soon